morning, good morning, welcome to our Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, Kingston, Jamaica. Not a lovely morning filled with sunshine. We had a little showers yesterday, but we are all good this morning. Please join me in an opening affirmative prayer. But before I do that prayer, as you close your eyes, allow that consciousness of love and light to surround the families of our beloved Lilith. Her sister has gone on her onward journey. We don't say goodbyes anymore. And we think of Audrey who has gone on her journey. So we surround Joan and the entire family with that circle of love. So gently close your eyes. Dwelling in love. As we acknowledge that presence of love in our midst, that presence of love that has brought us all together in our sanctuary and virtually in cyberspace, but it's still one beautiful consciousness, a consciousness that comforts, that fulfills itself in through each and every individual filling us with that sense of knowing that we are all one. One in God and one with each other. And it's that presence of that oneness now that allows this Sunday morning service to be led by our beloved Reverend John to stream forth in the consciousness of all who come into contact with it. And I know that as hearers of the word, we are uplifted, we are blessed, and wherever we find ourselves, that healing consciousness of love engages each and every person that comes into contact with us. And that fellowship allows each individual to feel loved and appreciated, knowing that we all are children of the Most High God, co-creators. So this morning we create together a consciousness of light, a consciousness of love that blesses our island home, Jamaica, and indeed the entire cosmos. So every idea for our highest good to experience and to express that love flows through seamlessly this morning. And it's with thanksgiving that I release this word and know a perfect experience of love and fellowship for each one of us now. This is the truth. I know that it is so, and so it is. And it's in that spirit of love that we welcome May. May's Child's Month, it also has Mother's Day in it. So it's a month of love and appreciation. And Rev will lead you into the perfect theme this, theme this morning. But I, my inspirational reading underscores what it means to be childlike. And I read from Richard Living, May 4th. Today, as a child, I enter into the gladness of living, trusting in the eternal goodness. Who would not be as a child again? Who would not again have the simple faith and childlike trust that somehow how or other we seem to lose on the pathway of human experience? Things crowd in upon us until we lose one of the greatest gifts of all, the simple, spontaneous joy of living and a trust in the power of good, which alone is able, willing, ready to meet all our needs. Let us then again return to the place of assurance that comes with the simplicity of faith. And I read, 
And so my faith, the faith of the little child in me, rises with expectancy to meet the new day, comes in joy to accept the bounty of heaven. With the faith of a little child, I place my human hand in the invisible hand of the all-sustaining good, and I let the miracle of life and love take place. I break my bread with thanks and distribute with good as I have to everyone I meet. I say of my own household and the households of all others, and I quote, God bless the four corners of this house and be the lentil blessed and bless the bed and bless the board and bless each place of rest and bless the door that opens wide to stranger as to kin and bless each crystal window pane that lets the sunlight in, end of quote. How to remain childlike. We thank Dr. Holmes for that reading, 365 Days of Richer Living. And now in that consciousness of light and love, we sing our joy song, What a Wonderful World. wonderful world we live in. Can we say together the prayer of our center? It's on a flyer in your program if you're with us or on the screen if you're watching in virtual space. Together, the, the Temple, Temple of Light, Light Center, Center for, for Spiritual, Spiritual Living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate. To touch, to, touch, to, to heal, to, to bless, bless, to, to prosper, prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. way. The, the light of the Christ illumines us, our center and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and glory forever. And so it is. Amen. Please sit. This part of the service is very special to me because we bless the youth of our church and indeed the entire world by lighting this youth candle. If you know the blessing, you can say it with me. But I will go on. 
for all the youth. We love, love you. you. We, we appreciate, appreciate you. you. We, we salute the Christ in you. you. We see you as shining lights unto your world. world. God, God is blessing you now. And so it is. And together now, our mission song. The temple of light, the temple of light, the temple of light. We are a people with a vision. One spirit on a mission. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper. To love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us anytime, night or day. Ah, vibrant. <laughs> okay, it's now time for mm, business or announcements for this week. Our floral arrangements this week are Sean Blake's contribution to the beauty of our sanctuary. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> they are lovely, aren't they? Yes. Good. We are once again able to accommodate up to 30 persons in our sanctuary, and you are asked to phone and let us know if we will have the pleasure of seeing you. Of course, we are still streaming live every Sunday at 9 a.m. and on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. The recording is also available later on YouTube. A schedule of our temple activities is posted online on the Temple of Light Facebook page. Beginning today, we will have a new spiritual activity from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. every first and third Sunday. It is called a Wisdom Circle and will be led by Mrs. Angela Elliott on the terrace outside our book room. The Wisdom Circle will read and discuss various books and we begin this morning with a new design for living written by our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Everyone is invited and you need not have a copy of the book, as someone will read from the group. So come and share your consciousness with us, those who are in the sanctuary this morning. And you know that we'll keep the protocol as usual. Mother's Day is looming large. Hmm. Have you thought of a gift? Well, our series of 14 meditations on peace would make a perfect Mother's Day gift. Don't you think so? I think, I think so. so. If you, if have, you listened have listened to the sample, to the sample recording, recording on Facebook, on Facebook page, page, then you know, then what, you know what, what I'm talking, talking about. about. So please, so please you, you can, can purchase, purchase those 14, 14 meditations, meditations by going on, going on our, our Facebook, Facebook page and it will give you all the details. So you, so you can't say you don't, you don't know what to buy. We have given you the opportunity or you could buy a book from our book room. Our TMC council has been looking about our, the business of the Temple of Light. And events and meetings have been going on, yes, in this time. So we now invite Mrs. Sandra Cooper, who is the chair, to give us some information about our TMC council and all their meetings. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Reverend Anne. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Sandra. Sandra. You know, during the last couple of months, as Reverend Anne said, 
a group of very dedicated temple members has been meeting and crafting the inputs for the temple's strategic plan. As a quick reminder, I just want to tell you about the six innovative teams. We have education programs, development and delivery, and they are responsible for our training programs and the teaching of the science of mind, which is at the core of the work that we do here. There's a, the vibrant youth ministry, whose purpose is to attract and retain young people who are spiritually grounded, engaged, and involved in every aspect of our center's operations. We have Tech Action, and it sounds nice, you know, Take Action, but they are Tech Action. <laughs> facilitating communication and connectivity through technology. Then there are the, there's a TOL property trailblazers, and their purpose is income generation and sustainability. Governance is charged with organizational integrity, structure, and order. And culture, spelled C-U-L-C-H-A, that is the grounding in our consciousness and the magnetic energy and vibe of our temple. So what have we accomplished so far? Well, we have generated valuable contributions and feedback from key internal and external stakeholders that, are, that have enabled us to understand our multiple stakeholder needs and what it would take to meet those needs. Much appreciation to those of you who participated in our stakeholder interviews. The feedback was humbling in some cases. And we are committed to making every effort to address as many of the needs identified as possible, some of which are deemed quite urgent. A second accomplishment is, of course, some really, really transformational ideas being generated from those stakeholder interviews. I have the ideas that will be channeled through the six, in, um, in, in each area of those six innovation teams. And we'll tell you a little bit more about those as we go along. We've also been able to identify and understand the various types of imposed laws, rules, and regulations, formal and informal, internal and external, as they relate to the innovations that are being developed. For example, there are the center, Centers for Spiritual Living bylaws that affect how uh, centers like ours operate. There are the Articles and Memorandum of Association of the Temple of Light, our Declaration of Principles, we never thought of that. And externally, you know, there's a noise law. So if we have events on this property, the noise law will come in, you know, we can't um, have, have sound that is above a certain decibel. There are neighborhood covenants and copyright laws governing our use of music and the written word. Do you know that if we play a piece of recorded music on a track at a Sunday morning service, without the owner's permission, Facebook or YouTube can shut us down? So we have to be very careful about, our, about the music that we use. So what do we have left to do? Our innovative teams are just about compiling one, uh, completing one more exercise, separating strategic activities from operational activities. And then it's over to our project manager, Lorna Phillips, to pull the document together. She will then draft a, or prepare a draft outline, which will be shared with the board, with the TMC, and with you, our members. So on behalf of the innovative teams, I know I'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to Lorna for guiding us through this process. It, it has be, been a beautiful and wonderful roller coaster ride. I know that when we are done, we are going to have a sound, robust document that will be a powerful catalyst for the temple's transformation. And now here's what some of our thriving, thriving ministry quadrants are up to. Now, raising co um, consciousness, um, Reverend Ann spoke to you about the 14 guided meditations. So just make sure that you get on our Facebook page and, and purchase one for yourself or for um, one of the wonderful nurturers in your 
in your family, in your life during this month um, dedicated to children and to mothers. The Quadrant also uh, participated in a visioning activity led by Reverend John, um, which generated some amazing ideas and activities. So you'll be hearing a little bit more about those as well. Now the Developing Organization Quadrant. Um, so our founding minister, Reverend Dr. Elmer, was a prolific writer. Decades of her writings were gifted to the temple and a dedicated subgroup of the organization Quadrant under the moniker Reverend, Elma's Pub Reverend Elma Publishers has collated her sermons and arranged for the digitization of over 10,000 of her handwritten pages. The goal is to eventually have these documents published and we'll definitely keep you posted about this particular project because I'm sure it's near and dear to or, you know, many of us, and, and, and so we'll keep you posted. Can you imagine um, when we present Reverend Elmer's books? And it's just, it, it's going to be more than one book, I can assure you. Now, developing community. Sometime last year, as we were in the throes of this new experience that they call a pandemic, the TMC started an outreach activity dubbed the Love Circles. In this activity, board members, ministers, practitioners, um, quadrant uh, uh, members, and, and several TMC members were um, committed to calling congregants, calling each and every one of you. Some of you may have received a phone call from one of us, just to check in to see how you're doing. Well, this is something that we would really like to continue. And so going forward, it will happen through the community quadrant, who, by the way, is now recruiting members so you can speak to the chair, Ms. Doreen Mallet, and you can you know, come to us and we, we can give you a contact or some contact information for her after the service. And finally, on the Culture Cup Quadrant, we have an appeal to all of you, our members. If you would like to be a part of a prospering, growing, self-maintained community that is a powerful spiritual magnet that attracts and inspires people for as we say, come here and stay. And we ask that you consider being a part of the culture quadrant. For us, culture is so much more than music and performing arts. It's a heartbeat of our temple. It's our rituals, it, it is our music and performing, but it is also our consciousness. And so we do invite you to, um, to, to step up and participate in our culture activities. You can speak with me, of course, and I will provide information for you. So that's all, folks. Should you have any questions, I will be available after our service to share with you. And I really thank each and every one of you for being a part of my own journey. Namaste. <laughs> thank you, Sandro. Yes, our temple is moving onwards and upwards. I, I would, in my own right, I want to say thanks to every single member of those innovative circles. Every Saturday morning, they sit at 10, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and they discuss, and they turn over, and they plan, and they wipe out, and they write again. It is fantastic. I know that with this consciousness will allow our temple to just bloom into that beacon of light and hope, and it really is. Thank you, Sandra, and thank you all for participating. If you feel moved to support our ministry, please visit our donate page at donate.templeoflightcsl.org, which has our banking details. I'll read that again, donate.templeoflightcsl.org, which has our banking details. You will note that it includes a new option for donating online. Thank you all for your generosity and for helping us to become a beacon of light in the world. It's, yes, a special time, and we know that we all have challenges but we continue to use the tool that is available to us, which is prayer. So a practitioner is always available to pray with you immediately following our service every Sunday morning. On duty today 
is Reverend Sonia Davidson. And the number to call is 876-289-0907. I'll repeat, 876-289-0907. This concludes our announcements. Please join us in singing our first hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. The words are in your program if you're in the sanctuary with us, but on the screen if you're on our love stream. Let us sing lustily together. Temple of White Light Choir. We do have a choir here. And now I invite you to just sit back and relax. Our message this morning is from our beloved Reverend John. And his theme is based on this month, which is Child's Month. So get your notebook out and your pens or pencils because you're going to have homework. <laughs> So please join me in welcoming Reverend John to the podium. Thank you, Reverend Annie. So May is being celebrated as Child Month here in beautiful Jamaica. And the beloved congregant sent me some, some great comments by kids about the ocean. Most of them are too risque, I think, for airplay, but there is one that I wanted to share with you from a little boy called Mikey, who was age seven. He said, and I quote, if you are surrounded by water, you're an island. But if you're not surrounded by the ocean, you're incontinent. <laughs> so good morning, my worldwide spiritual family. 
and a very special welcome to all of you celebrating another beautiful sun-drenched Sunday morning with us at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in Jamaica. We're an island. But it doesn't matter whether you are an island or you're in continent. We are ever so happy to have you sharing with us in consciousness. It is just, it's just one, one that we can meet. Can meet. We, we, know, we, know, we know you don't think about it, but there are many countries where people are not free to worship, to worship as they wish. And so this, and so this for me is a great, great privilege to be able to gather either online or in person and to, to acknowledge the creator, the author, and the finisher of our lives, God the good, omnipotent, and omniscient source of all that is. Isaiah, the prophet, foretells a time when the lion and the lamb will feed together. A time when all creation, all nature, will coexist in the harmony and peace God intended. And says Isaiah, and I quote, and a little child shall lead them. End of that scripture. And then in Matthew Chapter 18, verses 1 to 3, we read, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them, and he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. End of that scripture. My friends, Jesus was not, as you know, referring to a geographic location called heaven, but rather to the state of consciousness that results from knowing that we are inextricably bound up with God, the God presence and the God power that is in all, through all, over all, all in all, as all. Religious science founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, commenting on the, the passage in Matthew, points out that Jesus understood, quote, that the childlike mind is more receptive to truth than the over-intellectual who demand too rational an explanation of those truths which must be accepted on faith. On page 456 of the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Holmes writes, and I quote, how we long for a return of that simple trust in life which children have. In their minds, there are no doubts. They have not yet been told that they are sinners, destitute of divine guidance and spiritual life. The life of the child is lived in natural goodness. End of quote. I will never forget my first visit to the Temple of Light in 1981. First of all, I, it was most unusual to go into a church and find a lady minister. I mean, that was just not politically the done thing. So that was the first thing that had me, you know, all airs for what this woman was going to say. And my friend Larry Chang, who had invited me, said, John, she's right up your street. She laughs at her own jokes. And she really is just point on with the meaning of our existence and our relationship with God. So I came, I had an open mind. I was a very devout Catholic, um, Anglo-Catholic, um, but I was most interested in hearing her. And that first Sunday, I was just blown away because she, she spoke about sin. I thought I'd invented it and I had a, the patent. Um, I thought if, if they mentioned sin, as if they didn't have uh, YouTube in those days, but if, if they had, and my name was with it, it would have been okay. YouTube would have uh, accepted you and played the, um, the recording. I really thought I had, the, I had the patent on sin. And then she said, but sin is just an error. I thought, oh, my goodness. And then she explained that it is, it is a term from archery that when archers aim for the bullseye and they miss the mark, they are said to have sinned. And just bells went off in my mind. I thought, my goodness. So life is natural goodness, the goodness that God created. 
And what we are doing is we are aiming for that goodness. I am aiming for it. And every now and then, in fact, more often than not, I missed the mark. But wow, all I need do was take aim, as we say in Jamaica, wheel and come again. Take aim and fire again. And when you do that often enough, practice, 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 you know how that goes. You get better and better and better at it. And so I came to the recognition that every day, in fact, every moment of every day, gave me an opportunity to aim again at the goodness that I was learning to believe and to understand were mine by divine right of being. Friends, I'm not exaggerating when I said that for someone who was brought up to believe that I personally had driven the nails into Jesus' hands and pierced his side, that first taste of truth really was an eye-opener for me. And every day I, I thank God. Over all of these 40-odd years, I thank God that I crossed the threshold of this temple of light and began to learn how to take aim and hit that bullseye of God's goodness that is the right of every person, man, woman, and child, that is brought into the world. But I knew I was a, I was a dancer in my earlier years, and I knew that just as I had to train my body by practicing constantly, rehearsing and memorizing to improve my muscular memory and, and the way my body moved, I had to do the same with my mind. And so I made a decision and a determination that I would diligently attend services whenever I was in, in Jamaica. I mean, if I was even out of town, I would drive back to Kingston for, for church on a Sunday. I didn't miss it. And to attend classes because I wanted to have the same kind of mind tone that I had with my body tone as a dancer. And Little did I realize that that practice, 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 that spirit had put my feet on a path that would lead me to where I'm standing today, sharing on this Sunday morning with you all. It is truly a blessing. So in addition to being a dancer in my younger years, I also worked with the airlines. And so this story about a little boy in Sunday school really appealed to me. The story goes that the Sunday school teacher asked the, the kids to draw pictures of their favorite Bible story. And she was a little puzzled because little Johnny drew a picture of four people on an airplane. So she said, little Johnny, that's, that's interesting. Uh, what, what Bible story are you, are you illustrating? And he said, the flight to Egypt. In that tone of voice, children use when they think that we don't have a scrap of common sense. So she said, oh, that's lovely. So that must be Joseph and Mary, and there is baby Jesus. But, but who is the fourth person? Oh, said little Johnny, that's Pontius the pilot. You gotta love them. <laughs> Dr. Holmes says, and I quote, we must return the way we came as little children who know that life is good and to be trusted. Little children know that life is good and is to be trusted. And Holmes says we are to approach our problems as though they were not. Approaching them in this manner, they will vanish, unquote. So I have an assignment for you. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is this. First of all, this week, it's a three-part assignment, but very simple. First of all, this week, I want you to dig up a picture of yourself, a photograph of yourself when you were a small child. See if you can find a picture of yourself when you were young. And spend some quiet time this week contemplating that picture and loving the child that you were. You know, many of us didn't feel very loved when we were small. 
But even if you did have a loving experience as a, as a child, still look for a picture of yourself and you give yourself some of that love because that little child still dwells within each and every one of us. And sometimes that little child feels quite lost because, you know, we come, as the poet said, streaming clouds of glory from God. And then the world teaches us that we are unworthy and sinful and um, like a filthy rag. How could God create something other than that which is beautiful and pure and perfect? But somehow the world leads us to believe that we really are unworthy. So spend some time this week just holding a picture of yourself and recalling that time and loving yourself. So that's the first part of your assignment. Secondly, buy yourself a small toy. It doesn't have to be something expensive. It can be a yo-yo or remember when you were, you were young, you used to play jacks with, with a little ball or a matchbox car or a small doll. Um, buy yourself a small toy and play with your toy for a bit every day during your spiritual um, time as you repeat this affirmation. With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. Can we say that together? With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. In a half voice, with childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. In a whisper, with childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. And now say it in your heart. And so it is. You feel the energy change as you say it from a loud voice to a half voice to a whisper and then deep within you. You are generating that energy to make that, that thought, that, that truth, take a hold in your, your central nervous system, in your body, in your DNA, and become the essence of your belief system. With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. Thirdly, I told you there was a three part to your assignment. If you have anything at all to do with children, whether they be grown children or they be, you know, not yet grown up, see if you can go through an entire day without making any judgments or critical statements. Just see if you can spend a whole day in the presence of your children without being critical or judgmental or saying the word no. Hmm, tall order. For many kids, life too often becomes a litany of do's and don'ts from adults. And you know what happens? It results in blocked channels of communication which cause our children to withdraw or feel alienated from the adults around them. Laying off the criticism and finding genuine things to compliment will deepen the bonds of friendship and respect between you and your young people. So one, find yourself a picture of yourself when you were a youth and love yourself for a few moments every day. Keep that picture on your desk or put it on your fridge or somewhere where you see it and you can love yourself whenever you see it. Second, buy yourself a small toy and when you are playing with it, affirm with childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. And thirdly, lay off the judgment and the criticisms and the shoulds and shouldn'ts and do's and don'ts with your young people and just find things that are positive and uplifting and life-affirming to admire in them. By the way, as we're mentioning our young people, our guest speaker for our May 27th Lifeline presentation on Facebook Live will be our own Temple of Light young adult, Zoe Saunders. And she'll be speaking on the topic, bringing up parents. So make a note in your, in your, in your calendars, May 27th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know we are going to get some very interesting 
um, feedback and some, some very energizing ideas about how our young people perhaps perceive and experience us. Looking forward to seeing, seeing Zoe um, on, on that um, presentation. And because it's Child Month, I'd like to tell you an Anansi story. Anansi, for those who are not um, familiar, is an Akan folktale hero who often took the shape of a spider. Anansi made his way from West Africa via the Middle Passage into the hearts of Caribbean children, bringing with him his deep understanding of human nature. So Anansi's stories were part of an exclusively oral tradition, um, and Anansi himself was seen as synonymous with skill and wisdom and a keen wit. He used to use human foibles and you know, human um, tendencies to greed and, and to go down the wrong path. Um, to great effect as he dealt with people. So the story I'm going to share with you today is called Anansi and Common Sense. Once upon a time, Smaddy tell Breda Anansi say, common sense in short supply. So Anansi make up his mind, say, him going collect all the common sense he can find in the world. He was thinking that he would be the smartest smaddy in the world if he could just accomplish that. Collect up, collect up, collect up all the common sense in can find. And so Anansi went around, traveling uphill and down dale all over the world, collecting the common sense in a big calabash on a board. And he put the common sense he would find in this big calabash and he went small, small villages, villages, villages and big cities, cities to, 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 to big countries, countries and little countries. You went to primary schools and university, never find too much common sense about the university, but he uh, went to business places, big business and small business. He went to government offices, he went to churches and he went to cathedrals, collecting all of the common sense he could lay his hands on. He put it in him calabash, and then him decide, say, him want to hide it to a place where only him one can reach it. So there was a big guanga tree in our backyard. And him decide to climb the guanga tree and hide the calabash with the common sense in the top of it. So him hang the calabash round him neck, hanging on his chest, and start to climb. But of course, the calabash on his chest hindered his progress upwards. So so him climb, so him slip back. So him climb, so him slip back. Or him you know, just crawling getting more and more frustrated. And then a little girl under the tree look up and say, morning, Mr. Nancy. Why you don't um, put the calabash upon your back? And then you could have, it would, you could have get up the t to the top of the tree much quicker and much easier. And Nancy said, what you say, Pickney? She said, yes, put the calabash upon your back because you see, when it's on your chest, it in there you're climbing. So, and Nancy was vexed because, and say, him think him had got all the common sense in the world, and this little picnic show him up. In Bex, in Bex, in Bex, so tell him, fling down the calabash on ground, and it bust open, and all of the common sense when we collect up fly out all over the world. That is how we find little common sense, each of we have it today. So I want to say to you, if you're walking around and you're seeing the common sense, pick it up. The reason that children show us up is they're not afraid to pick up things. They pick up good and then pick up not so good. So they pick up whatever they find. And we need to be sure, my friends, that we use our common sense in dealing with the picnic them because they have it. I'm always amazed at how you can hand them your phone or your tablet or whatever device you're using and say, how you do so and so? And they just go, then look at you with that expression of, oh dear. You don't really you get it, do you? It seems as if they come into the world now knowing stuff <laughs> that it takes us such a long time to get used to. Anyway, all Anansi stories end with, with a, an interesting phrase, Jack Mandora may not choose none, which means, I'm not taking any sides, I'm just giving it to you, 
as I got it. So Jack Mandora may not choose. Now pick up any common sense, you're fine. My friends, from another culture uh, in another time, Khalil Gibran, the Lebanese-American philosopher, artist, poet, and writer, speaking on children in his immortal work, The Prophet, writes, and I quote, and a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, speak to us of children. And he said, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the houses of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not back nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite, and he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness, for even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. End of that beautiful piece of, of prose. So my friends, I urge you to think about it. God is the archer and God never misses the mark because there is no sin in God. God's goodness is all that there is and anything unlike that is an invention of the human mind. God is the only thing we have to experience. And you can train yourself to think, not of the things you don't want, but of the things you do want to experience as a child of the infinite, as a child of God. In our children, as in all of us, there is a wisdom and a power not of the flesh which springs permanently from the inner life, the all-powerful and all-wise, and it is the wisdom of God. The little child living in you knows all that it needs to know to ace the game of life. May you come to trust the inner power with the simple faith of that little child within you. And may each of you continue to grow in spirit and in truth as you continue aiming for the bullseye and hitting the mark. And if you sin, what do you do? Aim and fire again. Journalist Helen Ratner, writing for worldnetdaily.com, notes, and I quote, I have traveled the world over to know this one truth. There is no force of nature as powerful as the joy of a child. Children have the gift of being able to laugh and play through war, economic despair, natural disaster, disease, and hunger. Their magical power to transform their environment has been recorded for thousands of years. For as Isaiah 11:16 prophesied, and a little child shall lead them. Namaste. Namaste. What a great message. My takeaway today, thank you, Reverend John. Every moment in every day, we can aim always to be a revealer of truth by the toning of our minds. And when you tone the mind with the affirmation, 
With childlike faith, I trust the process of life to experience only good. Allow that to just seep into your consciousness. Only good. And as for the assignments, they'll be po the assignment will be posted on Facebook Live for those who did not write it down. But you have the picture to love, your little picture. The second one is the toy. Lord Reverend John, why did you remind me that I have a skipping rope that I have hidden from my children? So I'm going to learn to skip this week again. <laughs> uh, so, and just to remember that the joy of being a child, a childlike faith, and just trust that infinite power and presence. Thank you, Reverend John. And in that consciousness, I'm going to invite him again to the podium to bless the persons born in May. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to loved ones, happy birthday to you, God is blessing you now, God is blessing you now, God is blessing you And as the strains of the birthday song pour out from our center, from our hearts, to fill the cosmos with the beauty of our love and our wishes, we bless those born in May, knowing that they have come on a special assignment to be the ambassadors of love, of laughter, and of joy for the creator of all good. I see them as expert marksmen and markswomen, aiming at the bullseye, a world that works for all, and hitting the mark so that in their experience there is minimal error, in fact, none at all, for it is all and only God blessing their lives and every step of their journey onwards and upwards into greater than they have ever experienced before. So from the center of their being to the circumference of their conscious awareness, those born in May live, move, and manifest life in a victorious state of fulfillment to the honor and glory of God. And my heart sings a song of praise and a psalm of thanksgiving that this is so. And, and so, so it is. is to you. Happy birthday. Thank you, Reverend John, and a wonderful birthday to all those persons in me. And now we'll have to serenade those persons in me. Ah, a beautiful musical item rendered by Anthony Henry, I believe. So 
Tony, thank you, Angelo. Let us all say together, I believe. I believe. And you know, speaking about uh, hearing a baby cry, it's such a privilege over the years to watch them go from babies into adulthood. And one of our temple young people, um, Kimon Na, son of Norman and Kimberly Na, is graduating today with a BSc in Aeronautical Science and a Commercial Pilot License. Um, it seems just like yesterday he was a Lucas officer in a Sunday school. So let us give him a report. We believe, believe in the future, future of, our of our children. And in fact, in they're fact, not, not our future, they, they are our now. They are, they are what, what is happening for the world, world. and they have come to make this a place that truly matters and that truly works for all. Please stand with me and repeat the prayer of Jamaica, the prayer of our beautiful island. Together. The radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island, Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. And so it is. And in this consciousness, we sing our second hymn, Let, on page three of your programs and on the screen, 
of our live stream, our love stream. You can contribute to our ministry of light and love at donate.templeoflightcsl.org where you will see we have a new local option which makes giving even easier. Would you take your loving gifts in your hands and if you're at home and about to press the donate button, just put your hand on your heart for a moment as we bless the gift of ourselves to this ministry of light. Lovingly I give Joyfully I receive. Be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper, and enrich everyone whom you touch, and replenish all of my financial affairs. So be it. Thank you, Father. And so it is. And so we bless the gifts of time, of talent, of consciousness, and treasure that pour into this Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living to do the amazing work of transformation that we have been called to do. It is truly a joy to be a part of this movement upwards and onwards as the light grows and glows ever brighter in our souls so that those who have lost their way may see and seek to find the light within themselves. This word is now established in the law, our gifts are blessed and returned to us tenfold, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with blessings in our life, because this is the law. We truly give thanks that this is so, and so it is. Can we sing together, yes, there is love, Yes, there is love on earth, and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there is love on earth, the love that was meant to be. No. 
tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock for quiet moments in the garden, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and make a date to listen to Reverend Michael Record on Tuesday evening at our Spiritual Mind Healing Service, uh, which is another gem of wisdom coming our way on Tuesdays. Join us, please. And if you require some prayer support today, please call the prayer line. And Reverend Sonia will be happy to pray with you. We love you, we bless you, and we thank God for you. God is blessing you now, and so it is. Yes,